A good frosting, in my opinion, should have a smooth and creamy texture, making it easy to spread or pipe onto baked goods. Should be so stable that even if you turn it upside down, it should not fall off. No grittiness or not too liquidy, even when you are making use of any inclusions. And of course, should be so versatile that is just master the base recipe and you can create so many flavor pairings out of it. If you are struggling with any of these points, then let me share a step-by-step -step solution with you. One of the key problems we often face is our frosting turning out runny, especially when we add fresh flavorings to it. The solution to that is cooking, which is basically making a compote out of the fruits. This not only brings out the flavor, but also ensures that the final frosting is not runny. In today's recipe, we are making strawberry filling, so let us begin by cooking the strawberries along with sugar and lemon juice. Remember to mash the berries as you cook along. Once it starts boiling, conduct a taste test to adjust sweetness or acidity. That is, if it is too sweet, add in few drops of lemon juice and if it is too acidic, then add in sugar to balance out. Finally, add the custard powder slurry to thicken it while stirring continuously. In place of custard powder, you can also use corn flour. Once thickened, pass it through a sieve and you will be left out with a smooth filling that won't get stuck in your piping tip when ready to pipe. Cover it with a cling wrap so that it touches the top of the filling. This ensures that there isn't any kind of skin forming on the top. Allow this to cool completely. Meanwhile, let us prepare the base of the frosting which starts with sifting the icing sugar. No matter which frosting you are using, this is a crucial step to avoid grittiness. Not once, swift twice and make sure to use icing sugar and not powdered sugar. Next, to ensure a smooth and creamy texture, we have to beat the cream cheese well. This ensures there are no lumps in cream cheese, making it extremely smooth and silky. Another factor that ensures creaminess is the consistency of cream cheese. Too cold means it won't whip well and room temperature cream cheese would result in a runnier frosting. So, what should be the consistency of cream cheese? Here is the trick. Weigh out the required amount of cream cheese from the refrigerator, microwave it for 10 seconds and then proceed with the recipe. Make sure to stop in between to scrape the bowl and continue beating just to ensure an even blending. In goes the icing sugar. Beat the two for another minute or so. Scrape the bowl and add the flavorings which in this case is the cold strawberry puree that we just prepared along with some vanilla. And by the way, this is the stage where you think about bringing in versatility in flavors. You could add peanut butter. We have that recipe too on the channel. Biscoff spread would also work. Or as simple as Nutella, melted chocolate or any other compote like blueberry or pineapple. So that is 5 different variations already. Let me know in the comments which flavor would you create. Continuing with the recipe, once you add the strawberry, do not beat for long. There are chances of splitting the cream cheese. You can very well make use of a spatula to ensure that everything is mixed properly. To make the filling more stable, we will make use of whipping cream here. Just whip the cream until stiff peaks forms. So this is your cream cheese frosting without butter recipe. In place of cream, you can also make use of butter to increase the stability, for which you can follow our stiff cream cheese frosting recipe. Once you get stiff peaks, take a portion of it and mix it with the strawberry cream cheese mixture. This basically helps loosen the mixture making it easier for us to mix with whipped cream in the next step. The only thing to take care is to fold the mixture gently into the whipping cream making sure that you do not deflate the beautiful air whipped into the cream. Look at that stability. This cream is now ready to be used both as a filling and a frosting on cakes or cupcakes. 
In fact, I have mentioned 10 different ways of using this frosting in the blog post that you can refer to if you like from the description box below. So that covers all my tips on how to make a good frosting and here is a video on making the perfect cupcake base on which you can frost the strawberry cream cheese frosting. I'll see you in that video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.